Hello and welcome to my first Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to make realistic fire. Well, not really realistic fire, but at least very realistic looking fire. Here's an example. I made that animation some time ago. Doesn't look bad at all, does it? You will have fire and you could add a background and foreground. It's not a problem, you don't have to have a black background. You will also have an ascending heat effect, which you can't really see on that poor video quality. First of all, I have to thank that guy. I don't call his name because I'm not quite sure how to pronounce it. Um, he made a tutorial on fire as well and I adapted some of his techniques. But what I'm going to show you will differ. If it wouldn't, I wouldn't have to um, do an additional tutorial. Okay, let's get started. I will split my tutorials in a few parts because YouTube only allows me 10 minutes of video. So we first erase the default cube, we don't need it. And instead we add a circle. We hit the spacebar, add mesh circle. Make sure fill is selected and press OK. This will be our particle emitter mesh. We hit the tab key, select the middle vertex, we are now in edit mode, and drag down the vertex into negative set direction. Hit tab again to switch back to object mode, and our mesh is finished. Now we go into object, and from there into particle buttons and we add a new particle system. First of all we select emit from random so that the particles emit randomly. Now we add a speed into normal direction about minus 1.8 because of the form of the mesh, the particles now perform a cone-like movement. We also add some random speeds, about 0.2, an acceleration into set direction, about 2.5. Now they are getting quicker into set direction. And we add some Brownian motion. To be honest, I don't know what Brownian motion means, but it makes the movement more turbulent. We also increase the amount to 2000. We increase the end time to 250. That's the default end time. You could that's 10 seconds and you could change it if you want. We decrease the lifetime to 25, that's one second. A flame shouldn't last longer than one second, so they are very quick. Okay, we also add some random lifetime, about 0.3. Okay, not bad. Now we add child particles. We go to children, select particles. Um, now every particle have surrounding particles, surrounding child particles. That's not really surrounding, you see what I mean? We increase the round value. Okay, now this is really surrounding. Okay, the random amount is too high. We only choose 25. What is the advantage of this? Um, we could increase just the particle amount as well, but it wouldn't look that structured with 
a lot of single particles. And the calculation also goes quicker, but that shouldn't be your decision to choose child particles. And the third big advantage is that he can specify additional movement settings for the child particles. For example, wave. And that is great for fire, a wave movement. That looks very turbulent. Okay, we doesn't change the settings, they are fitting very well. Okay, now we go to the materials, go to the shading button. And we add a material, add new. Our material will be a halo material. And every halo point has a very good scene, very well seen dot in the middle. And to prevent that, we um, decrease the alpha value about 0 0.015. That is very low, but it doesn't matter. We have a lot of particles and we will see them anyways. So we go into shaders and we decrease the halo size to 0.185. Now we will also have more structure through a lower halo size. We increase the hard value and they will look more soft. And we increase the add value. Now if two halos are overlaying each other, they will strengthen their effect. We choose soft, mm, which isn't very important, but it will soften the edges. We increase, uh, we select X alpha, which increases the add effect, and we choose halo text to give the halos a texture. Um, yeah, now we add a texture. Click add new go into texture buttons, select clouds, decrease the size a bit, increase the noise depth. The texture mm, you select doesn't really matter, it just has to be some noise texture. Okay, we go back to material buttons and we choose color which is just yellow clear yellow. We can make color corrections in the compositing part. Okay, and for the texture we added, we select map 2 and select a different color, which is red, clear red. Okay, now we have a look to what we have done. Hmm, that doesn't look a lot like fire, but you will see through compositing you can make a lot out of it. We just have to choose the background color to be black. I hit that world buttons, hit that color and select it black. Okay. Well. Um, I think that's a good position in the video to uh, finish that part. Next part will be about compositing. See you there.